In this video, I'll walk through some examples of integration by parts. Our first one is the integral of x squared times the natural log of x dx. And before we get into that, I'll talk about what is the formula for the integration by parts. Well, if we have the integral of some form u times dv, the integral of that equals u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so here's how this goes. We want to choose a u and a dv. So I have u and dv. And then we'll put it in this form. We'll have, have to actually take the antiderivative of whatever dv is, whatever we choose for dv, and then put it into this form, ultraviolet voodoo. Ultraviolet voodoo. So this is actually the reverse of the product rule for taking derivatives. Now we're taking um, the integral. So ultraviolet voodoo, that's just a, a way some people use to memorize that, and that's great. It's whatever helps you remember it is, is the right way. Now, we have to pick u and v. I'm going to pick natural log of x for u. So u equals natural log of x, and then du equals 1 over x dx. Good. I'm going to choose x squared dx as dv. I'm going to keep du and, v and uh, dv lined up. So dv equals x squared dx. We have to take the antiderivative of that to get v. And we find that v equals x to the third over 3. And that's just taking the antiderivative. To test that you could take the derivative of x to the third over 3 and find that it's uh, x squared. Okay, now we're going to follow this form exactly. u times v. So natural log of x times v, or x to the third over 3, minus the integral of v du. So v is x to the third over 3. du is 1 over x dx. So that's the process for using the integration by parts. We're not done yet. We, now we have another integral to take, but usually this integral is something manageable. So I'm going to write x to the third over 3 in front of natural log of x. x to the third over 3 times the natural log of x minus the integral of x squared over 3 dx. I just simplified x to the third over 3 times 1 over x. And that gives us x to the third over 3 natural log of x minus 1 third, that's the 3 in the denominator, times x to the third over 3. That's This is the um, integral of just x squared. So just to show what I'm doing here, I'll, I'll mark this up. So just the x squared, the integral of that is x to the third over 3. And the 1 third comes from the 3 already being in the denominator. Okay, what do we need? If you said constant, you're right. Always remember that constant. Okay, so in the end we get x to the third over 3 natural log of x minus x to the third over 9 plus c. Excellent. So we've used integration by parts. And you should be asking yourself, why? Why did you take natural log of x for u? Well, I'll tell you why. There's a nice little way to memorize how to choose u. Choose u based on this pattern. Lippet. Lippet is the way to remember it. Lippet. So that's logarithmic functions like natural log of x inverse 
trig functions like inverse tangent of x, polynomial like x to the third minus x squared, exponential, uh, exponentials like e to the x, and finally trig functions like sine of x. So you follow this order and that is if you see a natural log of x that's going to be your u. If you see an inverse trigonometric function uh, and you don't see a natural log or a logarithmic function that will be your u. So you go down the list until you find one of these and guess what? On this next example we have what is the first you, you check it out. What do you think is the first uh, function that we see? And x times sine of 2x. So we have x and sine of 2x. It looks like x is our polynomial function. We don't have logarithmic and we don't have inverse trig. So I will say that u equals x, which would make du equal just 1 times dx. All right, that's, that was easy enough. Now, v, actually we pick dv, dv. So dv, I need some room on this one. dv equals sine of 2x dx. Remember the dx there because we're choosing a u and then dv. So we're, we want to get... Uh, we're going to substitute something for all of this stuff, right? So we want to take care of everything there. Now, v, taking the antiderivative of that, v equals negative one-half cosine of 2x. I kind of jumped to that, uh, but you could take the derivative, derivative of negative one-half cosine of 2x to verify that you get back to sine of 2x. Now we're going to plug in directly using using this this formula for the integration by parts ultraviolet voodoo all right u the ultra part that's x so x times the v which is negative one half cosine of 2x minus the integral of v again negative one-half cosine of 2x times du. And du is just dx. Well, that's good because we don't want to mess with any more. But if we had to, we would. All right, let's wrap this up. So we have negative x over 2 times the cosine of 2x. That's this part here. We have minus a negative, so I'm just going to fix that right away. That's a plus. Minus a negative is a plus, so I'll say plus now. One half times the integral of cosine of 2x, and that is another one half times the sine of 2x. Remember the constant, constant of integration. So what I have in red there is this part. It is the, well, it's this whole thing. I'm sorry. It is, what I have in red there is the integral of the cosine 2x dx. The one-half, the first one-half that I wrote is from the one-half that was already in the integral. This one-half comes from the integral of the cosine of 2x. Okay, in the end, we have negative x over 2 cosine of 2x plus one-fourth sine of 2x plus the constant of integration. There's a couple of examples of using integration by parts.